Hi everyone, James here from F9 Audio and the Freemasons and today I'm incredibly proud to present to you a stunningly musical collection of audio recordings played on the traditional nylon strung Spanish guitar by one of my favourite musicians, Robin Bolt. Now, why do we buy sample packs? I still remember the first time I brought anything and it was actually on a floppy disk contained about 720 kilobytes worth of drum samples for an Ensonic Mirage. Now that was 20 years ago and today uh, we're looking at every single release being either one or two gigabytes in size. But the sentiments are still the same. I'm a professional producer, I use Soundware, and I'm sure you guys, like me, buy sample packs in the hope that they will help make your record sound better. Now in my experience, having one or two organic elements against um, all of the electronica that you may be producing will really help make your tracks sing and give them a completely different focus. So I'm now going to walk you through this incredible collection of up-tempo, house-tempo effectively, uh, nylon-strung guitar loops and samples, and show you how we formatted them in such a way that will allow you to interact with this material completely individually. Okay, so every single version of this pack will contain 393 24-bit WAV loops and 393 REX files. Anyone buying the standard or Logic packs will also get them in Apple Loop format, and for Studio One users, we've converted the whole thing into the Audio Loop format. But for me, the best part are these menu patches that live in the deluxe DAW versions. And I'm here now in Logic X just to show you one of them. Now, we've chopped every single bit of the recording, pre-chopped it for you into 22 different sound menus laid across the keyboard. Now, every single one of those 22 menus will have at least 44 samples, so that's an awful lot of material. And that allows you to interact with this, um, this pack completely differently than you would anything else, and actually rebuild the solos in a way that's totally unique to you. Now, let me play you one of the patches here. This is 120 BPM E minor, and it's solo number four. Now that's just one of the many solo patches available to you within this pack. Now you can hear it's got some delay and reverb on there. Everything was actually recorded dry, but we've included channel strip settings uh, or combinators in the case of Reason to actually help these kind of zing out. Um, now we've got a selection of them in um, Logic here, and one of the beauties of having an organic instrument like a nylon guitar is it will take an awful lot of processing. So I've got four different processes here. I'm going to play the exactly the same um, set of notes, or effectively a set of sample re-triggers, through different effects chains. <laughs> Now these menu patches are split into two types across the pack. Uh, the first contains the solo information, the monophonic and the melodic lines that you're hearing uh, across all of the demos. And this is where you can build almost entire solos by actually piecing things back together in the way that you wish or the, what works with your track. The other half of this pack contains the strummed, arpeggiated and picked parts. Um, and let me just play you a couple examples of that live back from the MIDI keyboard now. Now that's only the beginning of the formatting that we've done for this pack. Anyone who's using the deluxe versions of this release will also have contact instruments of exactly the same menus, sample menus, laid out on exactly the same keys, but with one vital difference. They are all set to synchronize exactly to the tempo of the project that you're working on, which can yield some absolutely stunning results. Now let me show you exactly what I mean here. On this first blue section that I've just highlighted, it's playing back a standard EXS24 instrument. Underneath it, uh, on the second track is the contact version of exactly the same thing. Let me just do that so you can see the GUI. I've got a small scripted GUI here, but more about that in a minute. Um, and I've also drawn in a tempo curve. You can see a tempo drop here and a tempo rise up to silly proportions. And this will just show you the power of the contact instruments.
as you heard there, there's an enormous tempo variance that you can achieve um, with these contact instruments before it actually starts getting stupid. OK, now let's just go through the controls on the GUI. You've got some delays. Some room reverb. Uh, these are created from impulse responses that we made using vintage lexicon reverbs. Uh, here's a lexicon hall. Uh, some squish, which is a kind of mixture of tape saturation and some compression. And that's the reason why you would have heard a little sonic jump between the ESX24 and the contact version there. Rotors, for some reason, this just takes Leslie simulations beautifully. High pass filters. And low pass filters with resonance. Um, now, also, if you wanted to change the time stretching mode and actually take it out of tempo lock, if you click the edit button down here and come to, let's get the mapping editor, select all of the samples, and you see where it says on this uh, area here, it says speed, and it's selected to the zone. That means it's um, to the tempo lock of the individual sample. If you hold them all and just standard click just to the right of uh, that word zone and click default there, it'll change to back to... Um, a percentage slider, which means you can manually now. An awful lot of fun can be had with these contact patches. So now let's try some extreme settings and even pitch one of the patches down. OK, now moving on to Ableton, and this pack has been formatted to Live 9.5. It will work in both standard and suite versions, but it won't work in anything earlier than that, and there's a very good reason. Um, Live 9.5 brought the warping capabilities of Live into the simpler plugin, and we've used that extensively across the pack with these drum menus. Um, so the racks are actually tempo syncable as well. Um, here, let me just play one of the bits here. <laughs> And we've got some controls on the rack. We've got a nice chorus. And it's a bit different to the standard chorus effect that comes with Ableton. We've built it out of some pitch shifters. So if you're interested, go through the rack routing and find out how we've actually done it. Um, there's a delay, volume, feedback, and filter control. Those controls will work beautifully in conjunction with the breakdown dial at the bottom, which progressively makes things smaller as you turn it up. Perfect for when the beats drop out. Um, there's a nice big fat reverb control. And this push control that will just add a little bit of extra Dizzle to proceedings. Um, just take that feedback back a little bit. Um, now, we didn't stop there. We actually created a couple of little live racks here as well. This one will add some drive to uh, proceedings. Oh, I've got the twinkles control up here, which is throwing up some brilliant. And uh, one of my favourites at the moment, we're developing a, a series of one knob control for Ableton. And this one just makes things a little bit louder and a little bit more presence. Let me show you here. Just brings the reverb up. It's using parallel compression, EQ and a bit of tape simulation. So now let me show you the real-time time stretch. Using Ableton's 9.5 functionality um, and using the simpler warp functions, each one of these menu patches will actually sync to tempo.
Now, whilst we're in Ableton, I've just built a kind of demo here of how you can use these sounds in a more electric fashion. Being an organic instrument, well recorded and well played, it will take additional processing exceptionally well. Uh, and you might be quite surprised at all the sounds here. You've heard from the demos and how it sounds as a Spanish instrument, but just have a listen to this. <laughs> Now, there's an awful lot going on there, so let me just solo certain parts here. We've got um, this section that's coming out of one of the contact instruments with the rotors on, just creating a kind of ambient bed. And you may hear some glitches in the audio. Sorry, it's having a bit of a hard time doing all this and dealing with the screen capture. We've got this uh, high part. It's also going through one of my favourite eBay purchases just recently, 25 quid, one of the worst reverbs I've ever heard, but sounds brilliant. Weird, isn't it? 30 years of reverb development and sometimes the crappiest units are still the best. Um, but for me, the star of the show is definitely these fat solo parts. To give these sounds their overdriven character, I'm using Scuffer Mamp's brilliant S-Gear uh, guitar amp and cab simulation. It's actually part of the Slate All Bundle at the moment and well worth a look, but uh, these will pretty much take any guitar amp simulation that, uh, that you can throw at it. Um, I'm actually going to now grab all of them and solo all of these parts so you can hear what we've managed to get out of this pack in an electric style. <laughs> OK, let's have a look at the uh, Studio One functionality. We've converted all of the menus into Presence XD instruments. And we've also got some effects chains. And the great thing about Studio One is it separates its instrument part of the channel from its effects chain. So I can just drop these uh, straight onto here, and it will change the sound completely without changing the sampler patch. Uh, let's try an overdriven one. And here's a couple more. We've actually talked an awful lot about the sampler patches, but um, one of the beauties of this pack is also the quality of the loops. Now, an awful lot of solo phrases that Robin might play might actually happen before the beat, and if you think about your normal loop packs, they kind of work in either one bar, two bar, four bar, or eight bar loops. Um, but here, if we needed to add an extra bar to pick up um, the, the kind of information that was happening before the downbeat we have. So some of these will be at odd bar lengths, but they allow you to perfectly form solos. Let me show you what I mean. <laughs>
So by overlapping the kind of front and end parts of the loops, you can really build up quite impressive solos just from a small selection of loops. Now, one uh, thing that we should mention in Studio One, if you click this I button here at the left and turn both the tracks that I'm using here into time stretch, we're going to use Elastic Pro format and set the tempo functionality to time stretch there as well. I can actually change the tempo of this whole project. So let's take it down to 116. Everything is still snapped. And in fact, let's go even further. Let's take this down to 104. Now, some artifacts are starting to show there, but that's a pretty impressive time stretch for any DAW. And like an awful lot of Studio One will always surprise you. And now for the Reason version. We've packed everything into a refill as it's just the easiest way for file referencing. And we've got, again, these fantastic menu instruments. <laughs> Uh, with some controls on the combinator that allow you to add some delays. Control the feedback. Change the delay time from triplet to straight. Um, add some reverb. The button will swap between hall and plate reverbs. Add a chorus. And add this fire control, which will just add a bit of grunt and a bit of presence to the sound. Um, now, this is great fun to kind of fire over the top of loops like this. And you can easily hear there how I was able to put some of the demo material together. Now, anyone who's seen any of my older Reason videos know I'm a big lover of the time stretch algorithm, and that certainly works beautifully with this uh, actual loop pack. I've got some WAV loops here, and as always with Reason, it will conform to tempo. Um, try or to make sure you've always got this set to all round in the stretch and transpose type for the track, but let me show you what it's capable of. <laughs> Now that's incredible performance. We're down to almost 98 BPM and there's hardly any artifacts. So it just shows you the power of Reason's built-in time stretch and particularly something as harmonically complex as an acoustic guitar. And that's actually, that particular loop is three of Rob guitars uh, played together. Now I'm sure you're starting to hear from all of this, there is enough material in this pack to build some brilliant, brilliant up-tempo or even mid-tempo productions. And I hope some of you actually really dig into this and come up with something wonderful. Please let us know if you do. You can hear how much fun I had putting the demos together. And in fact, some of the demos turned out so well that I'm hoping to turn a couple of them into full tracks that will actually give away. So keep your eyes on the F9 Audio SoundCloud page. <laughs> So that's it for this walkthrough of this incredible release, and I hope you've enjoyed everything that we've been able to show you here. Volume one of the Soul recordings covers 116 to 124 BPM, but as you've seen from the time-stretched instruments, you can get a far greater range of tempos out of the material. Volume two will cover everything down tempo, and particular attention has been paid to the vital 70 and 80 BPM areas, because these are often double-timed in future breaks or drum and bass production. Now, all that's left for me now is to show you just how good Robin is as a player. Everything you are about to see is just one take of one of the recording sessions for this sample pack. <laughs>